I got it directly from migratephone.com. Um, I hit for the third part in our the Nexus 4 series, and this is all about the software, and this is about Jelly Bean in particular. So, this is Nexus 4 running 4.2.1. If you've got a Nexus 4, you'll be very familiar uh, with this particular version of Jelly Bean. So, we've got the um, on screen buttons. Uh, this is your back button, as usual. This one will always take you home. And now they've got this one, which is our um, task selector button. And this is what we use uh, for selecting tasks, much like you would on a Nexus 7. Um, one thing I'll say about Jelly Bean, Project Butter, which is uh, what's been rolled out across this uh, particular version, is all about how fluid um, the Jelly Bean interface is. And as you'll see, as I move through this, we've got a huge amount of responsiveness on this 4.7 inch um, screen. Uh, the, the screen goes all the way to the edges um, and it's also curved and so using the OS itself is very very quick indeed. Um, we've got Google now so if we lift this up here you'll see that we get uh, cards, things such as weather, how long to work and things like that and this will move straight into the uh, Google search engine here and where we've got things like voice recognition as well um, which also works very nicely. Um, we've got huge amounts of support, obviously, everything that would be available for all previous versions of Android are in here as well. We've got some new stuff. Also, if I was to uh, quickly take a look inside settings here, um, what we have <coughs> hidden quite nicely within the display is something called Daydream. Now, I heard about this through a magazine, and this is effectively the screensaver for your Android phone, so you can have it on anything. And I'd Basically, it comes on after a certain number of minutes or when it's uh, docked, and you can choose when to daydream uh, by, by that little menu button down there. I got this on char while charging, I don't actually have a dock right now. And you select what you want, so if I emulate it by pressing start now, you'll see there's just a very low um, battery use clock that appears. Just wipe the dust off there. Um, we go to colours, there's, there's lots of cool things, and you can imagine while you've got this on your desk docked, it would be a really nice addition. Um, there's also photos, I quite like it on currents. And um, click start. You've seen it that way that when it's sat um, charging on my desk, I get up to date news and whatnot, which is very, very cool indeed. Uh, what we also have um, is a new camera. We've got a megapixel camera on the back. Um, this particular camera, if I just move something in, yeah, it's very nice quality indeed. So we've got standard sort of camera buttons. We've got this button up here, which will give us the menu. Sorry about the strobing, that probably is a result of the camera and frequencies, but there you go. So this will allow us to make certain changes to um, the image itself. But what you also have is context aware uh, menu. So when you click on an area, you get the autofocus and then you get the menu, which you can then select by um, selecting with your thumb like that, which is really nice. Um, there's lots and lots that can be done here. There's lots of extra modes in here as well. We've got video, which is 1080p, 30 frames per second. Um, and the camera picks up nicely. Um, it's, it's, it's all good, and you can also take photos while you're videoing, which I thought was really cool. And because we've got such a lot of power here in the uh, device itself, it's really not laboured. Um, we've got panorama. Um, I'm sure you'll be familiar with panoramas, where you produce a, a landscape, and there'll be a lot better um, panoramas online. Obviously if you want to send us one of your best ones you carry on but uh, not the best conditions to do this in now. And also we've got this uh, photo bubble as it were um, where you effectively line up um, the first photo and then what you do is you fill in the gaps and eventually you get a free 160 degree bubble uh, around your um, viewpoint which is very cool. Um, I'll try and upload some decent copies and some decent photos of that when it's a little bit better setting. Um, what else do we have? We've got huge amounts of improvement in just general use and so even when you're using the Chrome because we've got such a lot of power and we've got such a uh, really nice smooth OS now it's not being laboured. Um, you'll see that just loading up websites and things like that all very very quick and everything's very very responsive including all the pinch to zoom and whatnot. Um, which is great to use and again it's very easy to just cancel out of things which is awesome. Um, on the device we've got NFC and things like that, so we've got um, Android Beam where you can just um, press two devices back to each other and then we'll get um, options to transfer things. Um, but what you may want to know about is uh, stats. Now this one has a few bits of software installed on it so we're not going to get a top benchmark here but I guarantee it'll be right up there. And so what I'll do is I'll just run through this um, Antutu test and as I did I'll just give you a bit of a talk. Um, and basically this will go through and benchmark the test I benchmark the phone against all the other current phones out there. Now as we know 
right now at the top of the pops is um, the Optimus G from LG and the Nexus 4, effectively a very very similar phone, made, both made by LG. Um, and uh, underneath that I think we've got the Note 2 um, and then we've got the S3 etc etc. Now the Nexus 4 has got a quad core 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon uh, S4 crate uh, chipset which is absolutely the top. You, you can't really get any faster than that right now. Uh, um, in benchmark tests, two core um, S4 crate outperforms a four core um, S3, but uh, in reality, it doesn't mean that four cores of S4 crate twice as fast as, say, a uh, Galaxy S3, which uses the S3, but it, it does give it just a little bit of uh, additional grunt, and um, that can be seen ac across the, the board not only in the Android operating system but also through graphics um, on games and other applications. So while well, we're just testing the boring parts of this, now we should see some graphics. Um, and this you can see is very very smooth indeed. Now we're testing things, the numbers of objects on display, things like triangles, things like lighting, and to determine the numbers of frames per second. Um, on a lot of handsets, these kind of tests would result in a lot of lag, but on the Nexus 4 you can see it's plowing through quite nicely. It's, uh, it's very good indeed. So, with the dark here, looking at about 53 frames per second, 54, 55. It's usually up in about the 55 territory this test. quite a new test. You see there's no lag, nothing's juttery. It's quite happy to go through. Like I say, um, when we get the results back on this you'll find there are tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands with much faster phones. A lot of these will be rooted and there are different Android OS's on uh, and they'll be overclocked etc. This is a fairly stock version of the Nexus 4 and this is how you'd anticipate it performing after you've installed all your favourite apps, things like Facebook and Dropbox and things like that, so they're running in the background there. Um, it's a pretty good benchmark of a daily use. Um, and while it's just going through this final bit, it should not take very long at all. I'll take this opportunity just to give you another little 360 of the phone itself. Um, w one thing I have found that since producing the last video is uh, one thing you want to be aware of is the back of this is very very shiny and if you place this on a desk um, with a shiny surface much like this and it isn't absolutely flat then what you'll find is the actual phone will start to slide so if your desk is um, unflat on uh, uneven surfaces and you put this phone on a shiny desk don't be surprised to find it on the floor okay score we've got 15,000 I don't think this is my best score with this phone um, let me see the score has been submitted, it puts me, yeah, 200,000 something, not my best score. <laughs> and, um, but you will see that in the uh, benchmarks here, um, the Nexus 4 does rain very highly usually. Um, so if we go to the chart, we'll see how this puts it against other devices. There we go, Optimus G right there at the top, Nexus 4, uh, Galaxy Note 2 S3, etc. That's what I expected to find. If we take a look at bar charts, um, let's put in my device actually below um, other devices, which must mean I've got a lot of things running, but you'll find an Nexus 4 usually sits quite high up there. Um, keep running these tests and you'll find you get different results each time, but still, very fluid, very fast. That wasn't straight after a reboot. Um, what else can I show you? Um, I'd like to show you the keyboard, and so uh, what I may do is if I load up my Twitter client, Uber Social. Let's go and uh, write a tweet. So what's happening? Um, the keyboard uh, is very predictive. It's a bit like Swift Text, um, and what well, it's also got the um, flow functionality where you can move your finger around. So you'll see now it'll draw a line. So um, see, not absolutely uh, prone from making mistakes but the predictor is up there so I can press that and I believe this learns as well so over time it will become more and more accurate 
Okay, so that's the keyboard. You see it's very easy to use. We switch it up onto uh, landscape and um, it's all very responsive. We get haptic feedback. Um, we've also got access to access to the video. So, things like that. Um, let me try this again. I'm currently recording a video review of Google's very cool new phone. Full stop. It's not that clever. <laughs> and there we go. And um, you see that was very, very accurate indeed. Okay, so um, other than that, we've got um, we've got all of the other Google apps um, to shake a stick at. So if we go into Maps, we'll just launch this up. Um, what you'll also find is the responsiveness of um, Project Bar and Google's OS can be seen through this as well. Um, and so you've seen, you saw how quickly then I was able to launch the app um, and get into it. And that's the same as moving between apps as well. Now what you'll find is, um, because this lag isn't there, you find yourself really moving through the OS very, very swiftly. Um, and it's the kind of experience you get with the Nexus 7 of a very kind of unhindered um, operating system that you'd liken more to the usability of iOS or Windows Phone um, and all the lag that you used to expect to see on an Android device is gone. Um, at the top here we have notifications, um, much like the Nexus 7 except they're not on different sides and we swap between the two like so and you clear them like that. Um, other than that, that's it for now. Um, I hope that gave you a good overview of the um, Nexus 7's, uh, the Nexus 4's um, software and operating system. Uh, it's very very cool and um, tune in for more future reviews where you'll see um, the handset being used for lots of other apps. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.